you can blow past everybody else as long as you grind your socks off. That's the difference between people who fail and the people who succeed. Vigorous Steve here. So yesterday I mentioned that if you're currently in a high stress working environment, you might seriously want to consider quitting your day job and start looking into monetizing your passion or your hobby. Now I understand that that's easier said than done. So here I am, I'm going to explain to you guys how to do that, how to get started and how to start earning money doing what you love. Now I already made a video explaining the blueprint for financial freedom. It's a two year roadmap and how to get started, how to save money with the highest paying job you can find. That might be a dirty job, a job you really don't enjoy, but a job you can earn a decent amount of money with. Saving that, putting that aside, hopefully in something that can accumulate wealth over time, like Bitcoin, for example, if you feel inclined to start investing in cryptocurrency, there's many different cryptocurrencies you can choose from. So I'll leave that investment opportunity to you. In the first year, you simply accumulate wealth. So you have a decent amount of financial support and backing once you start making your dreams happen in the second year. Now, a lot of guys watch this video because I released it. I think it's already been a year that this video has been online. So I'd like to know from you guys, after watching this video a couple months or maybe a year ago, did you start making this dream happen, working towards your goal, accumulating wealth, and hopefully making your dreams happen next year? I met several different people who already watched this video and made the exit from the Western world. They either went to Dubai or came to Thailand and met them face to face. But I would like to know from you guys if that video, if you watched it, was helpful for you and if you're already working towards your goals. Let me know down below in the comment section. And before we get started, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, consider subscribing if you're new to the Vigorous Crew, and do yourself a solid and myself a favor. Let this video sink in, sleep on it, and then watch it again tomorrow so you can kind of confirm the thoughts that you'll have after watching this video and start putting things in motion. So watch it twice, leave comments twice. You only have to like once because liking it again removes the like. And you only have to subscribe once because again, subscribing once is more than enough to boost the algorithm for this particular YouTube video. First things first, identify your passion identify your hobby. Hopefully you've been doing something your entire life or the large majority of your life, something that you're not really earning money with, something that's probably a sinkhole of money, but you're simply investing a lot into this project, your hobby, your passion, because you highly enjoy doing it. For me, that was always bodybuilding. Nowadays we have social media, obviously, and this is one of the platforms that a lot of you guys can actually start earning some money because you have to put your name out there for people to know you so you can offer services or share your passion and hobby with other people who have similar interests. So no matter how obscure or niche or rare your hobby or passion is, the world is very, very big. There are billions, whatever, 7 billion, 8 billion people out there. A large majority of those people are connected to the internet. So it doesn't really matter where those people live. They can be in your town or on the other side of the planet. As long as you put your hobby and passion on the internet. Now the key here is, is that you need to be really good at what you're doing. That's why we're trying to monetize our passion. Because in many cases, we've been doing this since a very early age. I've been bodybuilding since the age of 15. I've been on the lookout for information wherever I could find them. So again, that's the library or the internet other people on social media, I've been continuously learning as much as I can for the last, well, over 20 years now, right? With maybe a one year break when I was traveling the globe to um, get my backpacking itch out of the way. So the more you spend on your hobby, the more you spend on your passion, the more you learn, the more expertise you acquire, the more, the higher up you get in this ladder on this specific niche that you're interested in. Now, as you get more developed and more experienced in this niche and your passion and hobby, there are other people who you can teach how to follow this passion or hobby correctly. Of course, this is very broad, right? There's a million different things you can do and find interested in. I mean, there's so many things that people highly enjoy doing, playing video games, for example, the act of bodybuilding or anything related to fitness, playing with Legos. There's a million different YouTube channels out there with a wide variety of topics. And they all slowly but surely, as long as you're right, really putting effort into the videos and try to share your passion actively, as long as you keep going, 
then you will build an audience, an audience that you can ultimately collect revenue from so you can keep working on your passion while getting paid to do it. Again, you have to really figure out how to monetize that as long as your reputation is good and people really like what you're doing, then you can monetize that. It can be with a sponsor or several affiliates. It can be through coaching or consultation calls. There's so many opportunities in the fitness industry to make money. But again, the more experience you have with yourself, so the more years in the sports you have, the better your physique is developed, obviously. Hopefully, you've developed a good physique after a couple of years in the sport. And if you start working with people in the form of coaching, maybe in the beginning, you have to do that pro bono to get a couple before and after pictures. You'll have to start marketing that so people actually know that you're good at what you're doing. Don't be the guy that does one show and then starts offering coaching for a, you know exorbitant rates. That takes years to develop and you still need to manage the results, but also your reputation alongside of your coaching career. Because again, it's highly dependent on the results that you're getting and the word of mouth marketing that people are going to do for you that is ultimately going to play into how many clients you're going to get and how many of these clients are going to stay through several different iterations of coaching fees. Because hopefully over the years that you're doing this, your coaching fees are going to go up. Now, I already mentioned this in a separate video, so I'll link that at the end of this one. You have to find revenue streams which are applicable to your hobby. So again, with bodybuilding, there's many different revenue streams that I'm familiar with. First, you have to develop your social media to get an affiliate or a sponsor. And even with a couple thousand followers on Instagram or a couple thousand subscribers on YouTube or whatever it's called on TikTok, I mean, I'm, I'm on TikTok, but I have fuck all people that follow me there. Um, if you're on several different platforms, you can collect an audience. And with even a small audience, you can already go to an affiliate and say, listen, I have this following. Can I get a discount code so I can start marketing some of your products to my audience? With a small audience, you can get a kit back of the sales that you're going to make by promoting these products. And as your social media presence grows and you collect more followers and subscribers, then maybe you can get an actual sponsorship. It's same as an affiliate. You'll still get your code so they can track your sales, but you might get a salary for it so they can use your pictures, your marketing promotional material, and you know maybe you go to the booth or whatever. This way you can get a salary, which is probably not a full salary as a working job, but it will add income to your overall collection of revenue streams. That's just affiliates and sponsors, right? You can work with companies in a one-time deal. There's many different recruitment companies out there that will offer you $500, $1,000, depending on how many followers and subscribers you have on your social media platform for a single promotion. Let's say a 60-minute video in your YouTube channel. Now, personally, I've never done that. I get offers every single day to market product XYZ, but most of them I don't really find applicable for this YouTube channel and my audience. And that brings us to a very important point I need to make in this video. You shouldn't turn your social media platform into a hard sale. Again, there's many different financial opportunities out there, but the core business idea behind your social media platforms is that you're sharing. Sharing is caring. Stan Efferding mentioned this to me years ago when I first got on social media. He told me the golden rule of social media, basically, Give away as much information as you can, and it will pay off. It might take a year, it might take two years, but the more you share, the more it comes back to you. So that's what I've been doing for the last two or three years. So Stan Efferding, you are the best. Thank you so much. It's really, really paying off. That's why I'll see you in Las Vegas pretty, pretty soon. You give everything away for free, which is scary when you have unique skills and unique hobbies and unique passions that... Right, Many people don't really have a fundamental understanding of, but the more you give away, the more your audience will learn to appreciate you for giving this away for free. It's what I see in my comment section all the freaking time. I can't believe that this information is free, but it should be. <laughs> it should be. I don't believe in membership websites at all. I think that's an outdated practice. The information should be free out there for everybody to learn. If you want an hour of my time or personalized guidance, that's something I charge for. But everything I know, or 99% of everything that I know, I put on this YouTube channel for free. And you should do the exact same thing. Everything you know about your passion and your hobby, put it online somewhere for the world to find for free. 
And if you want to combine everything specifically into an ebook and charge for that, sweet, you can monetize some of it by having it organized, categorized, easy to understand, with perhaps some graphics. And in one place, people don't want to sift through all of your articles and videos and all of the content that you put out there for free. They want everything in one place in a nice sweet package for maybe $25, $50, $100 even. It's all at the same place. You just have to read it. They sift through it. They get their value for money. You get your positive review. Everybody's happy and you make money this way. But the core philosophy behind your business practice is giving away information for free. The more you give away, the more you get back. I promise you, it will take time. It will, might take a year or two, but this is why I made that video blueprint for financial success, because I know the first year that you start working on your passion and hobby and you know try to monetize that, you might not earn enough. So you need savings there. You need enough savings there to bridge this one-year gap. Now, at one point, if you're good at what you're doing, you have maybe a decade worth of experience on your hobby and you excel beyond your competition, which there's always going to be competition in this little niche. If you have a lot of experience, you're good at what you're doing, you know how to present that, you know how to you know, milk the social media platforms, which I'm still not very good at, but luckily I have some unique information that most people don't really have and I don't have that much competition, to be fair. I mean, we have Paul Burnett, Chase Irons, Think Big, and myself. That's the hardcore bodybuilding YouTube channels that are out there. And it's not competition. We're all bros. You know, we do collaborations together. We share subscribers. And honestly, personally, I'm trying to diversify a little bit more into general population, look into a little bit more of the anti-aging, the guys that are around 40 or 50 years old, so I can offer a unique service towards those guys. People are a little bit more financially secure than the general bodybuilder community. I'm trying to diversify and broaden my audience slowly over time. So you start somewhere within your little, little niche that you have a lot of experience with, hopefully. And again, if you don't have so much experience, we all got to start somewhere. We all got to learn somewhere. You'll have to look at it this way. The more experience you gain, the more you share your passion freely, the more you can slowly charge. And of course, there's always a little bit of seniority involved, but it, if you start very, very young and you're very driven and very passionate about your craft, I think within five years, you can really be phenomenally good and exceptional, better than everybody else who gets complacent and lazy and doesn't start learning new things and isn't really on top of the social media, right? You can blow past everybody else as long as you grind your fucking socks off. That's the difference between people who fail and the people who succeed. Grinding your socks off. Everybody will tell you the same thing. It was a very long and slow and tedious road to the top. And now that I'm close to the top, I look back and it was a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of work and my feet are blistered, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in moments that I wanted to quit, but I persisted. The people that persist ultimately win. And most people that are good at what they're doing, they will win within a year. I see it over and over again. And you start becoming successful. You should move out of those places because most of those places are filled with people who are not very, very motivated or good at what they're doing. So you have to start, you know, grinding your way up. And when you're at a level of financial freedom, don't stop. Don't, you can take a break. I mean, I took a break from YouTube videos for two and a half months. Now I'm right back, right? And it's not because I stopped working. I was still doing a lot of stuff, maybe not related to YouTube and the bodybuilding scene, but still with cryptocurrency, other projects that I'm involved in, I'm always, always, always grinding for financial freedom, which is another step, another goal that I want to attain. So you always have to keep going, but it doesn't really feel like work because you're constantly involved doing what you love. You structure your day as efficient as possible to get as much work done as possible before you go to bed. But you're constantly involved doing something that you're interested in, helping people along the way. And again, in most places of service, you're helping people, that's how you make money. You start producing YouTube videos, this is a skill you also need to learn, but you don't have to start learning or following an Adobe Premiere course before you can get started. You just get started. Right? My early videos, they were horrible. I just wanted to get myself out there. 
I did videos with Tony Huge for Enhanced Athlete and half of them didn't get posted. So I figured, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to spend all this time on camera, I'd rather start my own YouTube channel and post my own videos. So at least I know and I can control what's being posted. So again, I'm very thankful for Tony Huge giving me the opportunity when I was a completely unknown bodybuilding coach over here in Thailand. So Tony, thanks so much for getting me started. And now that I have my own YouTube channel, something I can highly recommend for you guys, even though the comment section can be quite brutal. I mean, you need a thick skin and, um, you know, the ban hammer should always be there. People who are negative and bring that negative nonsense into your life. I mean, you wouldn't tolerate that kind of nonsense in the real world. So why would you tolerate it online? Like we say in the business world, slow to hire, quick to fire. If you bring that nonsense to my doorstep, you're out. You only get one opportunity. And for everybody else that stays, make positive comments really fuels your motivation and does their part to help you grow your business because you're giving so much information for free, they'll love you for it. They'll love you and they'll give that love right back. So your channel will grow. It's not rocket science. I don't understand why not more people are starting this trajectory and doing something that they really enjoy doing by sharing it actively on social media. I know it's scary and people can be brutal, but you just ban them, remove them from your life. They will not come back. They might start bitching on Reddit or on some of the forums or with other um, content providers who start to hate your guts just because you're more successful <laughs> than they are. I mean, the haters will be there and it's just confirmation that you're doing something right because people will always be people. They will be negative. They'll be bitchy. They'll be complaining. And you're out there now, you're successful, you're a face of the industry, this little niche that you find yourself in and sharing information and actively try to improve the niche and the lives of the people in the niche by actively sharing your expertise and all of your experiences within your hobby and your passion over the last couple of years or decades even. There will always be this 1% that is not going to like what you do. So be it. You can't please everybody. You just have to keep going and keep grinding. These guys will fall off. Karma will get them. They will never make it to the top, but you will because you're enjoying what you're doing. Now, if you're a little bit introverted or you have a little bit of social anxiety and you don't really feel comfortable on camera, don't worry. You're not the only one. I feel highly uncomfortable on camera. And even though I don't really show it, that's just the final product. You don't want to know how many times I fuck up my pronunciation. So. With social anxiety, introvertedness, that's something you'll have to learn to get over. Yes, that takes time. Just get started. Just get started. Or come to Asia where introversion and social anxiety gets deleted quite fast because social interactions are 24-7. You can't escape it. People will approach you and talk to you because you as a foreigner, they find interesting. So this is a very easy way to get over. Again, you'll have your savings, right? Following that blueprint for financial access. Come here. Life is cheap. You'll get over your introvertedness quite easily and practice makes perfect. Of course, if you practice poor practices, then you'll never get perfect. So you'll still have to learn how to be comfortable and um, right, approachable and, and funny on camera. And it's something I'm still learning, but I think I'm getting better as this YouTube channel starts to grow. And the longer you do it, the more you persist, the more you write it out, the better you ultimately get. So again, if your first couple of videos, you're a little bit awkward. Have a look at some of the other YouTube channels within your niche. Go back all the way to their first videos that maybe have 500 views or 1,000 views and watch how awkward those videos are. And everybody's awkward on camera at the beginning. You know, I mean, you'll, you'll get over it. You have to start somewhere, but it's important to start and not stop. That's the golden rule here. Start and don't stop. You'll learn editing as you go along. You'll learn audio improvements as you go along. And when you start generating some revenue, you can reinvest that into a better camera, better microphone, a studio, right? And then maybe at one point you can hire an editor. It's a continuous process. Start somewhere and build your way up. Now I'm at a point where I have an editor, a professional microphone, a professional camera, a whole studio, and I might even improve this studio while I'm going to Las Vegas. So I have people working for me optimizing this entire studio, making it soundproof, making it look nice. It's a small investment for your guys' enjoyment so it can look even more professional going forward from 2023 onwards. And then the last thing I want to touch on for this video is your reputation. Reputation is everything. The smallest mistake you make 
could haunt you for the rest of your YouTube or social media career. It's that unfortunate. People hold the smallest things against you. I completely understand that nobody's perfect. I mean, I'm not perfect by any way, shape or form. I made plenty of mistakes in my life, but it's very important that you leave those mistakes behind. Who you are now, what you're trying to portray, what you're trying to share, the expertise and the help that you're offering towards your audience needs to come from a place of honesty. Your reputation will take time to build up, especially if you're not part of the fitness industry. So for me, I was basically a nobody. I've been living in Thailand for a very long time. And even though I've been helping people in Asia and all over Asia, and maybe a couple of people in Europe and America, people didn't really know about me until, again, I appeared on Tony Huge Enhanced Athlete Channel. So for me, the reputation on this part of the world is there, but most of my audience right now is in the Western world. So that took a long time to build up. So again, I went on YouTube, did my due diligence, putting the high quality information out there. And then Derek found me. I started doing collaborations with other people. And then it slowly, slowly grew. If you're part of the fitness industry in the Western world or part of your little niche that you're trying to monetize, right? your little circle of uh, hobbyists, then you already have a step ahead. Of course, you still need to sustain your reputation because ultimately, if you're trying to monetize your passion, people are only give you, going to give you money, super chats or buy your eBooks, buy consultations, use your discount codes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're only going to do that if they like you. If they don't like you or in the back of their head, they don't really trust you or they feel there's something wrong with you that it doesn't sit well with them, then No, obviously, they're not going to support you. They might still watch your videos because they like the content. They think it's valuable, but still in the back of their head, there's something like "Mm, something off about this guy. And you can either enforce that, right? Plenty of guys in the fitness industry continuously enforce bad habits and show to their audience that the audience is right about them. Posting DMs, for example. I don't believe in that. I believe that that's career suicide. If somebody sends you a direct message from anonymity or, you know, as as a question for help, don't start posting that stuff. That's fucking stupid. Why would I sign up for a consultation with you if you start posting DMs or private emails or even worse, posting somebody's real legal name? I mean, career suicide. And again, karma will get those guys because those guys, eventually the audience will figure out that these guys can't be trusted and they will no longer give money to these people. They will bankrupt themselves. So you really have to do your part to be an upstanding citizen. If you make mistakes, address them, explain it to your audience, take the blame, right? You're always at fault in the eyes of the public. So you might as well take blame for the mistakes that you've made and apologize to your audience because again, they're supporting you. They're supplementing your income. And even though one audience member is just a small part of your income, when you have tens, hundreds, millions of followers, you need to be sincere about your craft and apologize for the dumb shit that you've been doing. Reputation is everything. It will take a long, long time to build it up, especially if you're unknown and you don't have the opportunity to collaborate with bigger names in your niche, which is something that will inevitably happen. If people like what you're doing, if you're sharing something actively, you're helping people, your reputation will grow automatically. And the guys who are known or are already established, who have a larger audience, will find you. They like what you do, just like I like what Paul Mernet was doing and like what Chase Iron is doing or what uh, Scott McNally is doing over Think Big. That's why I like to collaborate with these guys and always give them a shout out because I follow them and you should too. That's why I'll link their YouTube channels down below so you can get more high quality bodybuilding information, not just from me, but from these guys as well. Please subscribe to these guys. They highly deserve it. Reputation takes forever to grow, but once you're slowly solidified, it will go exponentially. Again, that's highly dependent on your reputation. If you start talking shit, you start chasing people around the internet, you start making videos saying all kinds of derogatory stuff about people you consider to be your competition, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Always keep it positive, always be helpful, even when you feel that the world is against you and it's not really paying off. You'll need to give yourself a year or two before it actually starts paying off 
some dividends or right, you get a return of your investment. Again, that's why the savings is there. So you can bridge this period. At one point, it will pay off as long as you persist. And during this time that you're persisting and grinding, you keep it 100% positive, man. The problems of the world shouldn't affect you. The problems of other people shouldn't affect you. All you need to do is put your head down, grind your socks off, and your dreams will come true, I promise. Just like they came true for me. All right, I'll leave it here. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to get started. Again, watch that video about the blueprint towards financial success, or was it the blueprint for financial freedom? Either way, financial success, financial freedom, it's pretty much the same thing. The best skill you can have in this life is an ability to make money for yourself without an employer. Once the government tries to tack the taxes away, once an ex-wife tries to take half of your shit away, once you have to start paying all these bills, the only skill they can take away is your ability to make money for yourself. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was inspiring. Watch it again tomorrow. Let this information sink in so you know what to expect and how know how to proceed if you want to make your dreams come true and work doing what you love. For now, we're out of time. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Financially free, doing what I love every single day of the week. All because of you guys, because without you guys, I would just be, I don't know, just another no-name coach over here in Asia, coaching a couple of bodybuilders, um, you know, from the comforts of a small Instagram account. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video dropping Monday.